So the Eagles just hired Cliff Kingsbury as their new offensive coordinator. And I am not in approval of that switch. I think that, you know, Ryan Johnson didn't do a great job of offensive coordinating. But, oh, in no way is Cliff Kingsbury going to be any better. So, first of all, we need to start off with, with what happened with these problems anyway. So, the 2023 Philadelphia Eagles launched out to a 10-1 start, but it was filled with a lot of questions. First of all, the Eagles took a blow to the Jets, who came into that game at 2-3 and three and finished the season off at 7-10, and they ultimately were a pretty bad team last year, uh, the Jets, but they were able to get a big upset of the Philadelphia Eagles, and, you know, it was, it was bad. But what was more concerning than that was how close many of the Eagles' games were. The New England Patriots, who, to be fair, came off of last season at 8-9, and nine, very nearly upset the Philadelphia Eagles. How close was it? If the Patriots had made the two-point conversion that they had missed, the game would have been 25-22 and not 25-20, which would have meant that on 4th and 11 at the Philadelphia 19-yard line, they would have been able to have just attempted a field goal that should have went in to tie the game at 25 and potentially win that game in overtime. Also, that pass at the Philadelphia 8-yard line by the Patriots was very close to standing. Had the Eagles not challenged that play, it would have stood. That would have almost certainly have led to a New England touchdown with not enough time for the Eagles to respond. The Eagles went um, had a ton of rundowns after Nick City on his side score for it. Fourth and two at the New England 44-yard line. And that almost proved to be the wrong decision. Because again, Nick Sirianni was probably doing this in an attempt to secure the game for Philadelphia if it succeeded. But if it failed and there was a ton of run downs, it put New England very close in a position to potentially win the game. The Minnesota Vikings game, it all came down to a touchdown at the end of the half that was called back for a touchback that then allowed Philadelphia to march halfway down the field all the way to the Minnesota 43-yard line and attempt a 61-yard field goal, which Jake Elliott is capable of hitting. He is one of the best kickers in the NFL. And again, another very gutsy win. Week four, the Commanders, who, to be fair, came into that game at 2-1, and one, but they finished out the season at 4-13. and 13. They were just a horrible team this year. They took the Eagles to overtime. And in the other game that we played against um, the Commanders, they also, again, were somewhat close to winning. <sighs> in the Week 9 game against the Dallas Cowboys, the Cowboys got, you know, six yards away from winning the game. There was a ton of on downs. The six-yard line of Philadelphia. That's how close they were to getting the game-winning touchdown that they uh, ultimately failed to get. They were six yards away. Week 11 against the Chiefs, you know, we had to make a huge clawback. And, of course, it is the Kansas City Chiefs who came into that game at 7-2. and two, But they kind of struggled to finish the season, too. They finished, they finished the season at 11-6. and six, And they had some, you know, bad losses in that stretch. Like, they lost... Um, like they lost to um, the Bills, who weren't exactly looking too good at that time. They lost to um, they lost to the Raiders. That was pretty bad. Um, I keep forgetting who the other embarrassing loss during this time by um, Kansas City was by. But again. Lots of embarrassing losses. It was... It was not good. Not good. For... Um, for Philadelphia. Of Kansas City. But Philadelphia wasn't good either. Because then 
you know, the game against the Bills, who only came in since at six and five. It looked like at this time the Bills might not make the playoffs. The Bills outgained the Eagles, and while the and the Eagles did make a huge claw back to the game at 31 on a 59 yard field goal kick. It was pretty much as, cl- as close of a game as you could realistically get. Because the Bills got a field goal, but then the Eagles scored a touchdown in overtime to win the game 37 34. Then we get blown up by the 49ers and blown up by the Cowboys. At this point, Sean to say is fired. He he put a he let the 49ers put up 42 against the Eagles. He let the Cowboys put up 33 against the Eagles. And our defense was not good, and it already was a pretty bad defense. We were allowing many points in a, in a game, and it was because of our offense. But we were held just 19 against the um, 49ers and 13 against the Cowboys, and seven of those points against the Cowboys. Well, not even because of our offense. It was a special teams touchdown. So our offense was held just six points during the um, entire game. So it's clear that's not looking good. We switch it, but we get Matt Patricia, who did a pretty bad job in Detroit uh, calling plays. And... This poor defense allowed the Seahawks to put up a 92-yard game-winning drive against Philadelphia, which forced Salem Hurts into a situation where um, where he had to make a, a deep shot to get into field goal range, which wound up being intercepted at the Seattle 17-yard line. Now, I will say that that the officiating this season has, you know, been somewhat questionable. And in a lot of cases, you know, this questionable officiating has actually been beneficial to the Eagles. Hence why people say the Eagles were known for, quote-unquote, paying the refs. Like, I'll give an example. The Eagles-Dolphins game, when the Dolphins got 10 penalties and the Eagles got zero, that's suspicious. But, um, you know, Eagles-Bills, when the Eagles did not get a single holding call, that was suspicious. But... The refs seem to almost turn on Philadelphia. And you could see this in the Seahawks game where the Eagles challenged the cat, the interception, and it stood. To my eyes, even though he had both feet in bounds, it didn't look like he had control of the ball. And I've seen passes like that locked incomplete. Now, incomplete is still not a good result for Philadelphia. They still have to march 20 yards down the field to get into field goal range at uh, at that point. It's, it's still not good for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, if that happens. But at least it keeps us in the game. At least we go out with a, um, you know, with a bang, with a chance to get that pass that will potentially give us the win in that game. And we didn't. You also have the um, touchdown that was called back, and we were s- s- sentenced to a field goal, so we could only go up ten nothing and not fourteen nothing. That played an impact on the game because otherwise, even on the Seattle Seahawks miracle drive worked, they would have been um, they would have been um, only able to make it. Um, a tie game, and that's with a successful two-point conversion attempt. Uh, and the game will be tied at 21 in that case. Then the Eagles, if they do the smart thing, will take a knee into overtime and, um, and not do something stupid to try to hopefully get a field goal because we want to be desperate for it. At this juncture, a field goal would still only send the game to OT, but of course we lost the Seahawks on their backup QB. So that was really bad. But I figured, you know, a good win against the New Jersey Giants could save us. And we almost blew a 20 to 3 halftime lead. And it was questionable referees, too. Now, Giants fans also have to say that the refs cost them that game. But Eagles fans love to say that the refs nearly cost them that game. And both sides are kind of right because. Even though there was a questionable penalty that was supposed to be for the Eagles that was called for the Giants, the Eagles got a lot of penal- bogus penalties as well. So they kind of cancel out in that case. The Eagles, 
and the Giants, neither of them really got that much ref help because the refs played the game. And honestly, for us, our best game in the entire month of December, it was really bad. It was really ugly. And then we lost to the Cardinals. And we let the Cardinals find the end zone on every single drive. The Cardinals could have dropped 50 on the Eagles. They could have. They could have dropped 50 points on the Eagles. Uh, and really, it's it's that pick six that even put the Eagles in a position to even have a 21-6 lead. The Eagles should not have had a 21-6 lead at that juncture. They just shouldn't have had, you know, what... Of course, you know, the Eagles defense literally couldn't do anything. And our offense wasn't totally perfect either. But that just wouldn't display how bad the Eagles defense was. And then, of course, we got the 27-10 massacre against the Giants. And pretty much everyone gave up. And then the 32-9 situation against the Buccaneers where neither our defense or our offense looked competent. So, fire to say, fire, which is a horrible offense. And then fire, you know... Brian Johnson as well. But Cliff Kingsbury, I heard him say that he could be a good offensive coordinator. He got fired for the from the Cardinals for a reason. He led them to a 4-13 record in 2022. And honestly, when you look at 2023, they honestly kind of improved because they were able to beat good teams. They were able to have close games. Like, I mean, when you look at the Cardinals... Um, they were almost able to beat the Seahawks in Week 18. And they went toe-to-toe with a lot of good teams as well throughout that, uh, throughout the season. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, Arizona Cardinals, they were worst team in 2022. So, it's no surprise that I'm criticizing them for, um... For their lack of, um, you know, it was just a bad season for the Cardinals. And, uh, and again, you know, Arizona Cardinals, um, obviously they did the Eagles. Jonathan Gannon being a former defensive corner and probably knew something about it. And I, I, I don't know. I really just don't know. But we're probably going to have a really shoddy offense all year. I don't know, maybe Cliff Kingsbury can put things together. But I do not approve of this move.